Okay, so now we are going to look at another um, uniform circular motion dynamics problem and we are going to look at the conical pendulum. This video will show you how to put together the free body diagram for a conical pendulum and the equations for a conical pendulum knowing that we have this bob over here, uh, an object of mass m attached to a string um, that is a very light string and then this object, uh, this bob, is uh, moving in uniform circular motion in a horizontal plane like you see over here. In order for that to happen, the string that was initially in equilibrium uh, had to be moved from equilibrium at a certain angle theta. Once it's released, the bob, which is this object here, will perform uniform circular motion. So let's go ahead and put together the free body diagram for this uh, conical pendulum. The first thing we are going to draw is, of course, as always, the force of gravity. There we go, mg vertically downwards. And then there is one other force that's acting upon the object, which is the force of tension. The tension will go on the string, a pull on the object. So let's just say that's over here, T. Now these are the only two forces acting upon this object and we know that the object is performing uniform circular motion. So therefore we now have to follow the strategy that I introduced to you in my uh, lecture slides to uh, see how to resolve any forces and how to get the acceleration that we call the centripetal acceleration. In order to do that, we need our x and y axis, and according to our strategy, the x axis will have to be the axis that goes through the center of gravity of the object, which is over here, and the center of the circle. So let's do that. Let's draw that x axis over here as a helping line. Label that x. And then, of course, the y axis must be perpendicular to it. So let's just draw that one over here, perpendicular to the x-axis, helping line again, and label that y. So now we can see that out of the two forces acting upon the bob, m, g, and t, only t must be resolved. So let's do that, and I'm going to actually use blue over here to resolve t. We're going to draw from the arrow of t, perpendicular to both the x and y axis. There we go. And then we are going to get our two components. One of them is on the x-axis over here. And the other one is on the y-axis over here. Now we are going to label those two forces according to the angle theta over here. So as you can see, if this is theta here, then this here must also be theta, which makes this force, this uh, component of the tension, to be T sine theta, and this component over here to be T cosine theta. Now we are going to perform a magnitude check, which means we are going to have to remember that uh, we only need an unbalance of forces along the x-axis to give me a net force towards the center, center-seeking, centripetal. So the forces going on the y-axis must be balanced, which means T cosine theta and mg must have the same magnitude. And let's just measure those and see T cosine theta has a magnitude of 4 centimeters, while mg is 6. So it's obvious that mg is too long for us. We're going to shorten them to make sure that it's only 4 centimeters long. There we go. So our new mg now here um, and T cosine theta are balanced. And the net force, the unbalanced force, is center-seeking. It's uh, directed towards the center of the circle. So now we are going to choose our positive directions and I'm going to say to the right for x and up for y and I'm going to move on to writing the equations. So the second part of this um, video will show you how to write the equations for, uh, for this uh, scenario of a conical pendulum. So we obviously have our x and y. We're going to have an f net x and an f net y. f net y will have to be zero since the forces on the y are 
balance, then f net x will have to be m times ac. Remember, ac is the centripetal acceleration. Let's go ahead and um, uh, develop these equations a little bit more. For f net x, we only have one force, and it's positive equals mac, and that one positive force is my t sine theta in blue. So plus t sine theta, which means when I simplify this, I'm going to end up with the equation t sine theta equals m times the centripetal acceleration. For the y, I have two forces on the y. One is positive, and the other one is negative. So when I add up, those two forces as a vector sum, I need to have a zero. Since they balance, let's put in the forces and their directions, positive t cosine theta and negative mg. Once we simplify this, we are going to end up with the equation t cosine theta minus mg equals zero, or we can rearrange this to have t cosine theta equals mg. And these are the equations that you would need to use for any kind of problem that involves a conical pendulum, whether they ask you for the angle theta or the tension or the acceleration or anything else. Uh, my next video will show you a sample problem when you're asked to calculate the acceleration um, for a conical pendulum. But for this one video, that's it. I am finished. Thank you.